about what happened to George Floyd like there was some thing less than a crime. This was not just a tragedy. It was a crime. Just like the crime and that was Al Sharpton signing the letter of memorandum. Just like the crime that Al Sharpton was the FBI informant that he, a quote unquote, says he was never notified that he was an informant. What you was telling on people, Al, what do you think they do with snitch testimony? Right? So it's really hilarious to see that, or should I say it's troubling, to see that Al Sharpton is front and center during this Black Lives Matter tragedy. With the FBI in the mid-1980s, a TV host and activist said yesterday that he did record conversations with alleged mobsters. The Smoking Gun website has documents calling Sharpton a confidential informant for the Bureau. At a news conference yesterday, Sharpton insisted he wasn't a rat. In my own mind, I was not an informant. I was not and am not a rat, because I wasn't with the rats. I'm a cat. <laughs> I chase rats. Sharpton said the only embarrassing thing about the new revelations are, quote, those old fat pictures. Really? A lot of people have forgot about old Reverend Rat's FBI informant days. But you have to ask yourself, why is it that right now, in this moment, that of all the pastors in all the world, in a state like Texas, known for its Southern Baptist preachers and its Southern Baptist ways, we are, after all, in the Deep South. Why is it that we would bring a slick New York City civil rights activist from the Big Apple down to the heart of Texas? to deliver the eulogy of George Floyd. See, we should be asking some questions about this connection. What is the connection between Al Sharpton and the black community? We haven't elected Al Sharpton as the leader for black people. If you look at the letter of memorandum that was issued by Comcast via Mark Morial, Ben Jealous of the NAACP at the time, and also Al Sharpton who was the main component involved in this. Well, Al Sharpton out of it got a check, a donation, and a TV show that's been underperforming for quite a while now. The rest of black America, you got nothing. And just like that, look at old Al. He'll set you up, get you took down by the man. Do you hear me? Watch out for Al. He should be a clue that something is going on in the Black Lives Matter George Floyd debacle that we need to pay closer attention to black people. And Time Warner Cable are facing a $20 billion lawsuit over alleged racial discrimination against black owned media companies. Now, in the complaint, Byron Allen, a comedian, TV presenter, and CEO of Entertainment Studios, alleges that Comcast gave Al Sharpton that 6 p.m. show on MSNBC, for which he's been paid approximately $750,000 per year, despite notoriously low ratings, and in exchange for his continued public support for Comcast on issues of diversity. Now, it all sounds kind of convoluted, and I want to get to the bottom of it. So joining me now in Los Angeles is Byron Allen. Thank you for being here this morning. Thank you, Brian, for having me. Uh, this case uh, has been getting a lot of coverage this week. We've heard from Comcast, and I'll read their comment in a minute. But, but tell me the, the one-minute version of what you're alleging. Real simple. Uh, the cable industry, AT&T, DirecTV, Comcast, Time Warner, they spent about $50 billion a year licensing cable networks and advertising with less than, one, less than $3 million per year going to 100% African-American-owned media. Now, what they do is they make token donations to people like Al Sharpton, the NAACP, the Urban League, and after taking those donations, they negotiated a fraudulent MOU that says this is okay for black people to live by. What America needs to understand is that Al Sharpton does not speak for me. Al Sharpton does not speak for black people. It's like I ask people, who is the white person who speaks for you? 
It's racist to even believe that Al Sharpton is the go-to person. Shame on you, Sony, for thinking, sit down with Al Sharpton, and that negates your racist emails about President Obama. So it's real simple. These, these uh, token donations they make to him, as reported in the New York Post, allows them to have racial cover. This is why we're not getting enough advertising or any advertising from McDonald's and Coca-Cola and Chrysler and General Motors and AT&T. They don't spend any money with African-American-owned media. Something that's very alarming, AT&T spent more money on Al Sharpton's lavish 60th birthday than they spent on Ebony Magazine, the biggest African-American magazine in America, around 70 years, 10 million readers per month, AT&T spent only $30,000 on that magazine. Walmart has given money to Al Sharpton. Walmart doesn't spend any money in Ebony Magazine, and they barely do business with me in a long-term partnership, and I'm constantly going back and forth with Walmart and Chrysler as well. So he is the least expensive Negro. Don't really do business now, with you know real African American owned companies. Something like that sound. I mean, when you say that about Al Sharpton, are you, are you saying he's the numbers? Down the numbers are actual. The numbers are just just follow the money. That you know, don't do business with real African American owned companies. Just make a token. Give him fifty thousand and a bucket of chicken, and we're good. We won't have any problems with real African American owned media. You should not be Chrysler. You shouldn't be giving him money and not spending money you're, with me and others like me and Stevie Wonder's radio so station here in Los Angeles. So you're saying it's a shakedown, but aren't you trying to shake them down the same way by filing this lawsuit, which you no, know is not no, going to succeed? No, no, no. Look, Brian, let's define a shakedown. He doesn't give anything in return. I am a legitimate businessman. I am one of the largest independent producers of television and media in the world. I have 36 television shows on the air and seven 24-hour HD networks. They're not letting us participate in the $50 billion that they spend on licensing and advertising. There's a very big difference. He's the shakedown. I'm the legitimate entrepreneur. We have to make well, we're, sure we're that... We're showing some of your that, programs right now, but let me read Comcast's response. I think it's really important to hear their side here. They say this sure. complaint represents nothing more than a string of inflammatory, inaccurate, and unsupported allegations. We are proud of our outstanding record supporting and fostering diverse programming. They went on to say we will re defend vigorously against the scurrilous accusations, allegations in this complaint, and we fully expect that the court will dismiss them. Now, Sharpton has not commented on the record. Uh, do you have a question for him or a thing you'd like him to address about this? No, Al Sharpton's not that. He's not important. He's nothing more than a, a black pawn and a very sophisticated white economic chess game. He's being used by his white masters at Comcast and AT&T. He just needs to shut up and get in the bleachers. What we have to do is get their, get these corporations to understand you must include African-American-owned media. We have to stop the financial but genocide against the black Sharpton, community. You understand how offensive this all sounds to someone like Al Sharpton. Well, you know, I'm not worried about his feelings. I'm more focused on getting corporate America to understand it's time to do business with us. And President Obama, President Obama has been bought and paid for. He has taken donations from Comcast. Comcast is his biggest contributor. AT&T is one of his biggest contributors. Listen, Obama, you, you, your own FTC is investigating AT&T for throttling. How can you even consider them to buy DirecTV when you're suing them? Is it because you took donations? Yes, Obama. Don't even think about letting them merge until they settle this lawsuit and that lawsuit. Comcast so it sounds to got me, caught. Well, let me, Brian, me this like is your important. Main Comca issues here are about the mergers Comcast, Time Warner Cable, and ATT DirecTV. No, Brian, let me be clear. My main issue is about economic inclusion for African Americans. You know, Comcast deployed software that slowed down video over the web in 2008. They broke federal laws. That's like me robbing a bank and then after I get on on probation saying I want to be the president of the bank. Obama has to do more. I'm very proud of what Obama has done for the gay community. I'm very proud that he has achieved gay marriage. And if you can do that, you can achieve economic inclusion for all Americans, especially African Americans who have been left the furthest behind. Obama, you bailed out the banks. The banks you bailed out don't even make commercial loans to African Americans. Obama, you bailed out the car companies. Those car companies don't advertise with people like me and people like Ebony Magazine. Obama controls close to $2 billion in advertising. 
join the army, join the navy, join the it, marines. It sounds like we it as African Americans do not receive. Yeah. Yeah. My me no, and, Brian, you're not hearing me. Brian, listen to me carefully. My concern I, I hear what you're is saying. You're African saying that they're not advertising work. with independently owned media. These are issues about media consolidation. But I understand that you're making, no. making these racial points about how they affect African American communities and businesses. Uh, I do want viewers it's not to know just about uh, we read the Comcast statement, and we'd like to hear from Sharpton as well on this, and, and hopefully we can in the future. But uh, Mr. Allen, I do appreciate you being here this morning and, and telling us about the suit. Okay, Obama, do the right thing. To be consumers. We gotta understand that part of what you see is this thing right here, this memorandum of understanding. I want you guys to understand, I'm gonna put this link in the description. There's so many parts that are just questionable. All they're talking about is diversity, diversity, diversity. Signed by Al Sharpton and Mark Morial. All of them signed this document. None of it delivers any ownership or any real deliverables to a black America that deserves it all. Understand that Al Sharpton and them, they signed this thing and, and basically admits that Comcast don't do business with black folks. It admits the fact that black folks get a, a, a pittance of, of, of the ad dollars. One part it actually says that they, they did between 2006 and 2009, Comcast did $1.3 billion with minority owned vendors. Then if you flip to the next page, it says in 2009, Comcast spent $84 million with over 130 African-American-owned businesses. That ain't even ADOS. So billions went out to minorities, women, Latinos. We saw a couple million dollars. And if you go to ADOS, we probably saw next to nothing. American descendants of slavery. Understand that if you flip to an, a, another page, in 2009, NBCU spent almost $34 million with businesses owned and operated by African Americans. But you, 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 you don't even understand that they spend billions of dollars generally. And from 2006 to 2009, NBCU spent over $650 million with diverse suppliers. We're seeing nothing, but we're all the consumers. We're 40% of their co consumer base. In addition, listen to this. Comcast and NBCU jointly will commit at least an additional $7 million in spending on advertising with minority-owned media. We won't see any of that. We'd be lucky to see a million dollars of that as, as, as African-Americans. Harris Sharpton as he kicks off his National Action Network convention this week with de Blasio and President Obama the headliners. But de Blasio, who calls Sharpton family, is sticking by his buddy. Doesn't change the relationship one bit. I'm very proud to be his friend. Um, I think he has done a lot of good for the city of New York and for this country. I have the exact same positive view of him I had before. Sharpton has been dogged for years by reports that he was an FBI informant, helping the government go after boxing promoter Don King and music executives. Now we learn he also went after mobsters, including the legendary Vincent the Chin Giganti, the so-called odd father who paraded around in his bathrobe and pajamas. Though he has ducked and dodged questions about whether he wore a wire for the feds, that wasn't possible today since a batch of government documents were made public. The conversations were recorded. And there's also the issue of how he became an informant. Some say he was pressured into it after he was caught in a drug sting. This HBO undercover sting video that aired in 2002 shows Sharpton with a cowboy hat pulled down over his bouffant hairdo. Sharpton appears to nod when an agent offers him a cut from future drug sales. But now Sharpton claims he went to the feds for protection from threats from mob-connected music executives and was asked to rat out the bad guys. They were threatening to kill me. And while the feds say his information helped bring down guys like Giganti, Sharpton says he didn't know how his information was being used. I have never met any of these guys. The guy with the pajamas, I don't walk around with guys that walk outside pajamas. I don't, I never met these guys. Well, Sharpton says he's not embarrassed by anything that he did. What he is embarrassed about, he says, is how, quote, fat he used to be now that he has reinvented himself as a skinny guy. By the way, sources say the mayor will cut the ribbon tomorrow at the start of Sharpton's three-day National Action Network convention. Christina Maurice? Well, he does definitely look different. He does. Yes, <laughs> Marcia. As your career evolves, I mean, because now you're, you're on MSNBC, very successful show, on that have you gotten you've gotten some criticism over that do you believe that you sold out sold out to who you know one of the things that's interesting to me is 
if you look at the last two years, I've been on uh, MSNBC for two years, the issues that have been out front, mm -hmm. Trayvon Martin, I help lead. Voter ID, I help lead. Dealing with the whole question of ending early voting, I help lead. Dealing with the question of, of the unemployment, I help lead. 50th anniversary march on Washington, I organized a model of the King III to help lead. So the people that are criticized has done nothing but criticize every major social national move on civil rights. We've helped the lead. So not only have we not sold out, I think that they're disappointed that we still have been able to stay on the forefront of civil rights and still do my talk show. When you go and you read the, the comments, when people read about your book, it's always the same thing. This guy is a